Previously on the Adventure Zone. We're, we're, we're gonna be the best racers ever. We're gonna have the best racing team ever. Magnus, you're gonna be in charge of security. We're, we're probably gonna have a lot of borders. I'm gonna need you to, to keep them off the, off the wagon. We're gonna have some hop-ons. You win a battle wagon race by either finishing first or being the only surviving wagon by the end of the race. Um, so we're gonna need somebody who can, uh, assault the other wagons. I just want you up there fling, flinging your magic missiles. Merle, I actually have something I want to give you. It's a, it's a large black metal wrench. It's called the Adamant Spanner. And you're gonna need to use that out on the course if we take too much damage or, you know, a wheel falls off or something like that. Uh, she, she hands you three the, the harnesses. If you fall off the wagon, these will automatically uh. deploy a, a bubble around you. Uh, and she drives into the crate, and the door behind you uh, lifts up and closes. Remember, we got 15 opponents, but all we have to do is beat Sloan. Get out of my dreams and into my battle wagon. Hop in the patchy, baby. It's the adventure zone. another horn come uh from outside uh and hurley kicks the engine into gear even before the crate door drops uh and suddenly you are blinded by the sun pouring into the crate uh in which your your battle wagon was hiding um and even as your eyes adjust you can't really see much um but you do hear a lot you hear uh engines roaring uh even louder now uh, you hear a, a dust storm sort of whipping up uh, ar- around uh, the, the starting line here. Um, and then you start to see bright flashes of light moving between the different battle wagons. Uh, and uh, before, before you can really fully ascertain the situation, the, the three of you are deafened by an explosion about 20 meters to your left. Um, and after that explosion, you hear another horn. Uh, which seem to be emanating from these big black pylons. Uh, and then as, as soon as, like, while you're trying to figure that out, two uh, magic missiles fly over the car, nearly missing Taco, uh, and a spear flies just directly in front of the car. Uh, and then Hurley shifts gears, and you are sort of pushed back in your seats by the acceleration, uh, and you seem to be moving away from the pack. And then uh, as you as you sort of pull away a little bit, you hear four more horns sound from the pylons. Uh, and Hurley says, uh, every time you hear one of those, it means that we've knocked somebody out. She's like, we're already, we're already five down, so we're, we're looking good. Um, what? <laughs> Why are you yelling? Uh, she's yelling because it's super duper loud. Um, and then you hear her yell, damn it! Uh, and uh, as you, you look forward, you see that just a single vehicle... A tri-wheeled, almost uh, long boat with these two large black wings sort of splaying off the back with a single racer, the the Raven, uh, is really far ahead of you guys. Um, and Hurley shouts, I'll catch up. Just keep everyone off, else off our tail. What? I'll catch up. Just other... keep everyone else off our tail. <laughs> what about catch up? Um, no sooner has she said that. Uh, do you see a large vehicle approaching from the dust clouds behind you? It is a long bobsled uh, propelled by a single huge rocket thruster, and it's manned by four goblins, and they're all wearing velociraptor masks. Uh, And three of them are clutching these large, uh, rugged-looking spears, uh, and on the front of this bob sled is a bob sled is a large pronged spear uh, that is currently rocketing toward you. So let's uh, let's roll initiative, and I'm going to use your guys' rolls for the rest of the the race, and just sort of drop other stuff in as we go. I got 17. Pretty good roll. Thank you. Can I ask a question before I roll in? Yeah. Um, a lot of my spells in the descriptions are specific to 
like they specifically talk about creatures without mentioning like like it's not really specific to like vehicles or like we're doing right now do, do, would my spell still work the same or we'll just take it we'll like, just take it as it goes like if you it, i would say yeah you can fire a magic missile at a car can you charm a car no okay. well can you put a car to sleep no you can't unless it's night okay. rider in which case you probably could he probably just has a button for that yeah a sleepy time button. The 16 button. 16 is, is tacos oh by the way uh i should have mentioned this before merle in front of you is a single big button that last night during the montage uh hurley warned you not to touch it's sort of built really? in. It's built into the the dashboard directly in front of you. Oh man! And it's just right there, it's right? Just right there. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think about pushing that button. Uh, it's, oh! What did everyone get on their rolls? I got eighteen, sixteen, seventeen. Wow. We're just like super good at rolling. Okay. Uh, uh, Merle, you're up first. One thing I'll tell you guys that may come in handy uh, is is that you can delay your turn and sort of drop yourself into the order however you want. Um, not that you have to do that, Merle. It's just an option. Uh, so this car, uh, is about 20 feet behind, uh, your guy's wagon. And by car, I mean bobsled. Holy shit, I'm gonna have to be really good about that. Okay, so we gotta stop Team Jamaica. (laughs) Okay, all right. I am going to cast Enhance Ability. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna cast it on... Magnus. What does this do? You touch a creature and bestow upon it a magical enhancement. You get to choose bear's endurance, bull's strength. I'm going to actually uh, cast bull's strength. <laughs> I bet you touch Magnus versus you're casting bear's endurance because he is a bear. <clears throat> I'll take bear's strength. That's what I'm going with. In my okay, head. I'll go with bear's endurance. No, no, no. You do what, what do they do? Wait, what do they do? Yeah. Uh, I have to look on page 237 to tell me that. <laughs> oh, no, you ran into the Yeti in the cave. Start over. This, is, this has been the D&D Player's Handbook audiobook, hosted <laughs> by Clint McElroy. What's it called? What's the spell called, Dad? It's called Enhanceability. It's called Enhance. And what it does <laughs> is it takes your member and it stretches it out like taffy. Don't put your member in someone's hands. No, it's like a taffy stretching machine. Oh. Okay, uh, okay. Bears endurance. The target has advantage on Constitution checks. That's probably not going to happen. No. All right, then the target has advantage on strength checks. Yep, that probably. And won't. his or her carrying capacity doubles. Okay, so you can carry. I a pick ship. up the car. <laughs> so I give him advantage. <laughs> I give him advantage on strength. Okay. Uh cool. You grab onto Magnus's ankle, who I imagine... I'm really getting this cleric shit, aren't Yeah, I? you're doing yeah. good. Uh, yeah. you, you grab onto Magnus's ankle, he seems somewhat startled, um, but then he seems uh, energized. <laughs> his, his muscles just glisten in the, in the hot gold cliff Ew. sun. I fully rock out. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by that? Like the rock. He's a, he's a big... Oh, uh, I, see, I see, I see, I see, I yeah. see. I see, yes, okay. Yes, his eyebrows grow three sizes and move upwards on his face, about a half a foot. He's got a lot of face. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, next in the order are the goblins. The uh, uh, first goblin, the, the driver goblin's not going to do anything. He's just sort of uh, uh, driving the car. Uh, and he is uh, not really moving fast enough to catch up to Ram, you guys, with that big gnarly-looking spear on the front of the bobsled. Uh, the goblin behind him uh, is going to... Uh, run up the front of the car and uh, try to leap onto the back of your guy's battle wagon. Uh, he made a 24 uh, athletics, so he effortlessly oh. jumps. Uh, and as he is coming down, he is going to make an attack roll against Magnus. Okay. Uh, he rolls a 15 versus AC. That is not good enough, and I am going to use... Oh, shit. Um... When a creature misses you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction and expend one superiority die to make a melee weapon attack against the creature. If you hit, you add superior do- uh, superiority dice to the attack's damage. I'm going to use Phantom Fist and push him backwards. Okay. Push him back. Push him back. Way back. So that's 19 plus 7, 26. Okay. This guy leaps off the front of his bobsled uh, with a, a pretty enormous horizontal leap. 
uh, and just brings this spear down on you with one hand. Uh, but you effortlessly, like the water, just sort of move out of the way of it and greet his jump with a Shoryuken uppercut uh, that sends him flying backwards and underneath of the bob sled that he just and jumped out everyone on the of. goblin car just kind of starts crying. <laughs> they look a little bit grim. The two goblins behind uh, him uh, are going to throw spears at you. Okay. First one rolls a 19. Uh, oh, shit. Just hits. And the second one rolls a 12. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. And um, I also just remembered I have Fletcher's Fist. It's still a miss, but I'm very excited about my Fletcher's bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forget what that does. Plus one AC versus ranged. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you take five, ten, fourteen 14 points of damage from that spear. Uh, uh, is it worth it to use another one and use uh, my... I'm going to say, just in the interest of moving things forward... No? No. Okay. So I take uh, 14? 14 points of damage. Okay. Uh, and that is it for the Gerblins. Next up is Magnus. Cool. You are strapped into this railing, uh, these two railings going across the top of the car. You've just offed one uh, Gerblin. Okay, I, I'm going to aim an arrow at another Gerblin. Okay, which one? The driver or one of the two spears? The throwers? driver. Okay. That's, uh, that's probably not going to hit. That's a 12? Yeah, no. that's not going to do it. Uh, you fire an arrow at the driver of the car, but it sort of just bounces off the... Uh, he's got like a little a little windshield and just kind of glances off of. Um, next in the order is Taco. I, I, something that's unclear to me. Uh, are these like encounters that we need to like defeat these people or is there a chance we can just like go faster than them like what because we're not involved you're not in involved with this yeah don't this. worry about the speed part of it unless you th- can like figure out a way to slow their car down like you could affect it that way but you're not going to be able to make your car go faster okay got it um what a, what are the wheels of this thing looking like uh there are no uh, wheels it's, it's just got these just two some... sort of rails underneath it and it has this gigantic engine thruster behind it okay like a, it's um, almost like a it's almost like a rocket like a like a one of those like land speed setting rockets, and it's got a big old spear on the front of it. Oh, is it like a rocket? Kind of, yeah. Is it bobsled shaped? Yeah, it's a size? it's a bobsled. Okay. Like there there was a row of four dudes inside of it, like a bobsled. Okay, yeah. How much would you guess it weighs? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Justin. Maybe uh, like a ton. Like no, not like, hey, half a ton, half maybe half half a ton, half, maybe even half that. Mm. If you think about it, maybe uh, yeah, maybe I would more say than five hundred, five hundred, probably four hundred, four ninety nine, maybe even. Oh, well, because yeah. they have to have be, they have to be light for the speed. Yeah, well, that's that's my point. In Dad. the chicane, yeah, I guess it would or, be fi- fiberglass. We'll say four ninety nine, four ninety nine. Okay, I cast levitate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, on the uh, bobsled. Okay, so what is the okay? All right, so what does that mean? That, well, well, no, 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 because you can. Is, they have to resist. They can, an no, enemy resists being levitated, right? I'm not. I'm not levitating them. I'm levitating their sled. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, you got me there. If, if you can tell me how a sled resists levitation, no, you got a great I'm point. Into it. Um. So what does that mean? Uh. Okay. So uh, you don't know what levitate means? No. The spell. What does it mean? I'm trying to figure yeah. out what this is going to do to this bob sled. Okay. Right. So. One creature or object of my choice that I can see within range rises vertically up to 20 feet and remains suspended there for the duration. The spell can levitate a target that weighs up to 500 pounds. An unwilling creature, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Uh, a target can move only by pushing or pulling against a fixed object or surface within reach, uh, uh, which allows it to move as, it, as if it were climbing. You can change the target type altitude by up to 20 feet in other direction on your turn. If you're the target, you can move up or down as part of your move. So uh, I'm going to levitate it, um, but uh, I'm going to change the direction of the front of the vehicle. Uh, so it's just going up. You can do that? You can <laughs> choose which part? Of- uh, well, I can change the target's altitude by up to 20 feet. Yeah. So I guess it's, yeah, just, you're ju- it's just the altitude. Okay, here's, okay. here's how we're going to resolve this because I love it. Uh, okay. You levitate this bobsled uh, with its three riders inside of it, and uh, it, it comes off the ground. And you see the driver start to like try and twist the wheel around, but it's just sort of changing the sort of slant of the rails underneath of the car. 
uh, and everybody inside starts to panic. One of the spear uh, thrower raptors uh, just jumps off the back, and you see his bubble, uh, this this bright blue bubble, sort of surround him uh, as he disappears into the dust. Um, and uh, the 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 bobsled is actually picking up speed because it doesn't have any friction, sort of stopping it anymore. Um, and the spear on the front of the car sort of leaves a, a, supervis- a superficial gash in the, uh, in the rear of your battle wagon. Very narrowly missing Magnus. As it sort of digs into that pivot point, though, the car just starts flipping and spinning wildly, uh, and you see it disappear into the dust, throwing both of its riders uh, into, into the storm. Cool. That's, that's, that was pretty hot. I like so the whole killing embargo is more or less no, over. it's a hey, no holds barred on the racetrack. No, they have the they have the safety harnesses just like us, right? They'll be yeah. Everyone's got safety harnesses. Boom, 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 boom. It's game day. It's game day, son. Uh, uh, <laughs> Harley day. Harley looks backwards at this scene when she hears the the car get run into and goes, "That was tight." And uh, switches, what? shifts gears, and uh, uh, moves forward even faster. Um, uh, you handle that in a very unexpected way. Uh, uh, you, you guys get about uh, 30 seconds of sort of silence uh, as you're moving faster. Not, not complete silence. Uh, you hear a horn blast as you send the rocket bobsled uh, spinning off into the air. Uh, that was the sixth horn. Um, and uh, you, you get a little bit of, uh, of dead time um, until you hear... Uh, this this grinding, roaring sound coming to sort of back uh, and and to the right of you, uh, and out of the dust storm behind you, you see another vehicle uh, come through, and and before you actually see it, you see its shadow, and it's towering. It's it's gigantic. It's like it's like forty feet tall. Um, and as it sort of makes its way uh, out of the dust storm, you see it almost like. A single giant wheel, like a giant wooden uh, water wheel almost, with these big iron rivets in it. Uh, And inside of the wheel is this static circular chamber. Uh, And inside of that chamber are two pilots. Uh, They're they're these really stout-looking dwarves, and they're wearing gerbil masks. Um, and, uh, they, uh, they, <laughs> they're running like crazy. No, they're not, they're not running. They're just sort of, uh, they're, they're just sort of driving it. Uh, but you do get the right idea and I appreciate that. Uh, and they, pu- they pull up alongside What's it made of, out of, uh, it's made out of wood and these big iron rivets. Great. Not tree wood. Ah, damn it. I have explained this to you before. It only works on trees, not all wood forever. Uh, All wood was trees. That's I can't argue with that. And they are going to roll initiative. <clears throat> uh, who's the last person to go? Uh, the goblin. Oh, right? it's yeah, Taco. Taco. Okay, cool. First in the order is Merle. Um, Merle, so far the car is roughly undamaged. There's a, a bit of a gash in the uh, the back of the car. Um, but remember, just you, licks his thumb and rubs it out. Uh, uh, you've got uh, you've got away. four charges left on your uh, adamant spanner. That you can use to heal the car. Okay, um, but you don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, the wheel. Going... The wheel is to your right, and it's about. Uh, it's a, it's actually a pretty good distance away. It's about. Uh, it's about thirty yards away. I'm going to cast healing word on Magnus. Okay. Cool. Um. So I roll a D4 and I add my spell casting. Do you have your D4? To the pyramid. All right, okay. Uh, Four. Nice. And I add six to that, so that gives Trav ten points of healing. I love that. And I do it with a sage look in my eye and a little glint, and then I give him a Werther's. (laughs) What a... (laughs) Okay. What a... This is a level of competent and responsible play I'm not used to from this group. (laughs) I know. Oh, don't worry. We're doing, like, good... Okay. We'll work our way out of it. Uh, okay. Don't all right. don't jinx it. Next in the order is Magnus. Okay. Um, so at this point, I think I'm just going to ready an action and just be ready to like repel borders. So just like ready a phantom fist attack. Okay. If somebody jumps on, yeah, you can do that. Uh, next in the order is the pilots of the wheel. 
uh, the wheel. Uh, uh, sounds, sounds like a Robert Jordan book. It does, kind of. Uh, you guys see the wheel start to change directions, and it's it changes directions much faster than you thought something of that size could possibly do. Uh, and it rolls directly toward your battle wagon, and then it rolls over it. Uh, oh. So Magnus and Taco... Uh, it sort of rolls directly over uh, the sort of uh, back of the, the the roof. So you two are going to need to make dexterity saving throws. Okay. No. So, 20. 20. Okay, uh, Taco, you, d- you duck down in the back seat. Okay. I rolled an 18. An 18. Okay, you leap backwards, and the straps on your harness catch you on the back of the rails. You're sort of leaning at like a 45-degree angle over the open (laughs) road as this wheel rolls over the battle wagon and just sort of crumples the roof right down. Um, Okay, and I'm I'm, I'm serious. Help me visualize this. They're rolling across us? Yeah, they're they're sort of rolling over the... the, the, the like vertically or yeah like- oh they're sort of cutting a, a line sort of horizontally across the okay. middle of the okay. car sort okay. of crumpling okay. the the uh ex- almost exactly where taco's uh little hidey hole was it just sort okay. of rolls right over that um okay. then i would like to use my ready to action uh okay this is a gigantic wheel it's not going to do no i know i got you Okay. I wanna inst- can i can i switch out my ready to action and use like a different action? no once you once oh. you can't yeah um, so Taco, you ha- are going to have mind. Uh, you are going to have Taco. You're going to have disadvantage on any ranged attacks you make uh, while your little uh, hidey hole is is crumpled down. Okay. You're not going to be able All to right. really get out of it. Um, but I can't. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the wheel rolls completely over your car. Uh, you hear Hurley yell an expletive from the front seat, uh, and now it sort of steadies itself uh, about thirty meters to your left. Or no, Which it's expletive? actually a little bit. It's actually a little bit closer. It's about what was the expletive? It's about thirty-five or thirty feet to your left. Uh, the expletive was uh, "shit, Dad." Okay, okay, that's kind of her go-to word. Yeah. Uh, it is very good that the two of you dodge that. Uh, next to me, order is uh, Taco. Taka, you are sort of in the back seat. Your your whole your hidey hole is uh, a, a bit in a state of disarray, um, and it is your turn. So you said that like ranged attacks, but like anything you have to make a ranged attack roll on is going to have disadvantage. Okay. Uh, the wheel I'm going to go ahead and tell you is much much heavier like, than the bobsled. So if like if if you had to make a saving throw, but it's just a saving throw. Yeah, that's not an attack. Not a, okay, great. I'm going to cast Crown of Madness on what? whichever one is not obviously steering the vehicle. Uh, okay, I mean, they, they, I don't want to... Are they working in tandem? Yeah, it's almost like okay. a, a Pacific Rim style thing. Well, then the one on the layout. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Well, what Crown of Madness does is good. What Crown of Madness does is, um, uh, first off, it puts a, a twisted... A uh, crown of jagged iron. Holy across shit! His head. This is some and, Hellraiser stuff. Yeah, it's some brutal <laughs> stuff. Um, and what it, the charm target must use its action before moving on each of its turns to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that I mentally choose. So I'm going to cast it on one of them and have them attack the other one. Yeah. Okay. Ha dope. Uh, and I roll to save against this, right? Yeah, it's a wisdom one. Wisdom. Okay, well, let me come up with an imagine. Well, I'll roll a. How, how smart can gerbils be? Roll a right? D4. I mean, I figure they'd be stoops. Well, Wicked stoops. It's plus one. Okay. Uh, 13. Okay. What's your spellcasting saving throw? It's eight plus your spellcasting modifier. Um, And my spellcasting modifier is. Six, plus right? Five. Plus, yeah, plus it's higher than mine. With the plus one yeah. umbrella, it's plus six, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, you see the uh, the gerbil in the back, horrifyingly, because it's a fucking gerbil. You see this barbed wire crown uh, just sort of appear on its head. Uh, and the, the wheel starts to wobble a little bit. Uh, the wheel wobbles, but it won't fall down. Uh, next in the order is uh, Merle. Uh, Merle, it is your turn. 
Yeah, I gotta. I, I've got to use one of the charges on the uh, the spanner of uh, yeah. Adam Ant. Excellent. So um, <laughs> okay, you uh, goody two, goody two, goody goody two shoes. He makes that noise. I can't believe this. He makes that noise when you use it. Yeah. Uh, you uh, you lean out the the, uh, the passenger side window uh, and just sort of bring the mace down on top of the car. And wait, uh, can I can I say yeah, can say I stuff. say some exciting dialogue yeah, yeah. or something? Uh, uh, let's see, Ace is the place of the helpful hardware man. <laughs> this week's episode brought to you by Ace. Apparently, <laughs> uh, you, you bring it down on the top of the car, kabong. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, uh, magically the car just sort of, the, the roof just kind of pops itself out. It just kind of pops itself back into place. And weirdly, like the roof is now waxed. It's like it's ah. shining in the, in the sun. Although that doesn't last very long cause you're in a dust storm. Uh, okay. And also what about the little, uh, rent in the back? Did it fix that too? Nope. Just fix the, the roof. So, so you get the you get the idea whatever the repair. Yeah. Get, you get the idea that maybe it's, it doesn't fix the whole car. It just fixes whatever you are sort of targeting. Okay. Uh, gotcha. Next in the order is Magnus. Great. So the wheel still hasn't fallen over yet. No, although it's looking it's looking a little bit shaky. It's looking a little bit shaky. And how mm. close is it to me? Uh, it's about thirty five feet to your left. I wouldn't expend any energy on it. I mean, it, yeah, they, they got the gonna... gerbils are next. Yeah, and it's okay. not going to go great for them. <laughs> you can also delay your turn, Trav, if you want to wait. I feel you. Um, I so I would. What I'm going to do is not attack that thing. Um, but what I am going to do for future years is tie my rope to my crowbar, and like that's my action. Wait, what are you doing? Turn. I've got a crowbar. I've got a rope. I'm going to tie a rope to that crowbar. You're making like your own kinda... sort of makeshift grappling hook. Yeah, and I'm just going to like leave it at that. Okay. Hell yeah! All right, I'm into it. Um, yeah. Next, Mad Magnus. <laughs> uh, next is the wheel's turn. Um, but before the wheel even goes, another vehicle pulls out of the dust storm immediately behind you. Dookie. Uh, and this one almost looks, it, it looks similar to yours, not nearly as heavily armored or lovingly tuned. Um, but it is uh, driven by two riders, uh, and they are wearing... What are they wearing? Dolphin masks. And you hear them. <laughs> Wait, they're not actual dolphins, though, right? No, but that's just their war cry. Uh, and they, they pull just up Just like you're them. not an actual bear. Uh, and you what? Just, oh, God. Uh, you see two large ship cannons sort of pop out to either side of them. Uh, and they, uh, they get pretty close behind you. But first, the wheel goes... Uh, and the rider in the back, the back gerbil, is going to attack the front gerbil. And he crits. <laughs> he crits. Uh, so you see the back gerbil uh, reach down and take a, a, a little hammer and just sort of brain uh, the driver in front of him. Uh, and the wheel to your left starts to wobble. It starts to lose its balance pretty dramatically. And it starts to turn towards you as it does wobble. Uh, and just oh. as it looks like it's about to crush you, it falls entirely on its side, crushing and destroying the dolphin mobile that was chasing <laughs> and you. Hear, and you hear hey. come from the pylons around you. So that's eight. Let me do a count. That was two. Yes, eight five. down. Yeah, that's eight. It's only six left. No, it's 16 total, including you. Oh, okay. So seven left. All right. Gerbil side. How cool was that? Hey, everyone. It's your main man, Griffin McElroy, also your dungeon master. I am also that to you. And thank you for listening to episode 24 of The Adventure Zone. Uh, I hope you're enjoying our climactic uh, Mad Max meets Fast and the Furious 7 meets Wacky Racers race, because uh, it was a f- fun thing to record. Hey, this week's episode of The Adventure Zone is actually sponsored in part by Nature Box. Have you heard of Nature Box? Have you heard of flavors like Asiago and cheddar cheese in crisp form? Have you heard about sriracha cashews? 
the also a food item because nature box has them along with over a hundred other delicious snacks to choose from that get delivered directly to your doorstep they release brand new choices every single month they're full of flavor without any of the junk Head to naturebox.com slash adventure to unbox a world of taste and possibility. Still the best ad copy possibly ever written by anyone ever. I haven't seen Mad Men, but I think that the finale of that show was them writing that line for Naturebox. Head to naturebox.com slash adventure for your first box of hand-picked snacks sent direct to your doorstep. The Adventure Zone is also supported in part this week by Casper, an online retailer of premium, obsessively engineered mattresses for a fraction of the price. Casper has a risk-free trial and return policy. You can try sleeping on a Casper for 100 days. That's almost half a year with free delivery and painless returns. Adventure Zone listeners can get a $50 credit toward any mattress purchase. You can go to casper.com slash adventure and use promo code adventure at checkout. Terms and conditions, you know they're going to apply. I don't care what you get up to on that bed, though, once you purchase it. That's between you and your bedmate. And that's it. Just the two of you. Or the three of you. It's getting crazy up in there. Got a personal message here. If you want to get a message on the show, you can go to MaximumFun.org slash Jumbotron. Tell us what words to read with my mouth, and I'll just do it like this. This is, this, this is an example of what you can get. This is a message for Pete. And it's from Rob, who says, Happy birthday from your big brother. It's cool that you're curing cancer and shit while I pillage Mother Earth for financial gain. Karma works on a per-family basis, right? Sure it does. Thanks for neutralizing my evil. McElroy's, his birthday is September 14th. Whoops. Ramsham has been his gamer tag for years, so if he was somehow woven into the Battle Wagon's lore, well, shit, dude, I'm just now reading this. Um, if you want, you can pretend in your head canon that Hurley the Ram, that's short for Ramsham. But that's not real canon. But what you do in your brain is up to you and your bedmate. Happy birthday, Pete. Got another message here, and it's for Stacy from James, who says, Happy birthday, Stacy. I am hoping to cross narrative realms and gift Variel an item from the fantasy Gashapon. The role is an eight, or maybe a blessing from Merle. And even after Variel's greed slash ill-planned sexual escapades inevitably led to a humiliating end, the gift will not be wasted, as his party is not above grave robbing. Sounds like a pretty grim game you're running over there. Um, also, I need to know the class that Variel is if I'm going to give you a reward from the Fantasy Gashapon, because I may have different loot tables. I'm a big fucking nerd. But happy birthday, Stacy! Hey, I want to say a big thanks to everybody who came out to see our first ever live show at LA PodFest. It was a real intimate showing. Uh, also, all the folks who streamed the show. Uh, I, I know that there were some issues with the stream uh, throughout a lot of the weekend, but from what I hear, most of you got in to see the show, which is great. If you did have problems, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. Um, uh, you can still watch the show. The archive should be up soon if it's not up already. Uh, and uh, if you have no interest in watching it and didn't get a streaming ticket or whatever, I think we're going to release the episode because uh, there's some restrictions on when we can release it in the normal feed. I think we're just going to put it up as a donor bonus uh, in, in, I don't know, a, a few weeks or so. We're still trying to figure out the release plans for that. Uh, I think it, the show went pretty well. I think we learned a lot about how to do a live D&D play session. I think the next one we do, whenever that will be, uh, is, is going to be great, but we need a while to... We need a while to come down, y'all. I want to say thanks to everybody who's been sharing the show, who's been reviewing the show on iTunes, and who's been tweeting about the show using the the TheZoneCast hashtag. If you use the the TheZoneCast hashtag, you could end up as a character in the game. If you want to end up on the show, just tweet about the show using the the TheZoneCast hashtag. And and don't just do it to get on the show. Do it because you, you, you want to talk to your friends about this thing and talk about the grand mystery that we're all unraveling together as a group of friends and loved ones. If I sound super tired right now, it's because it is 1 a.m., and I am, Uh, but it's also because me and my wife, Rachel, just watched the movie that me and Justin and Travis and Dad are going to critique during Max Fun Swap Week. That's going to be the week of October 4th, Uh, so the next uh, Adventure Zone episode, uh, the four of us are going to be doing an episode of The Flophouse, Uh, and The Flophouse crew, I'm so profoundly excited uh, because they are doing uh, an episode of The Adventure Zone. I gave them the keys to the kingdom. 
I said do whatever you want. I haven't heard the episode yet. I'm fucking psyched. They are some of the funniest dudes I've I've ever heard. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to, to hear what they do uh, on a tabletop. So that's going to be our next episode of The Adventure Zone. Uh, it's going to go up on October 8th. Uh, and then we are going to get back into the, the battle wagon races, which I'm, I'm psyched about. Uh, also, I had a lot of people ask about the live show. It was not in the battle wagon race sort of uh, uh, arc. It was sort of a one-off episode. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I've been chatting your ear off for long enough. Thank you all so much for listening. Seriously, doing the live show like sort of uh, drove home the fact of, of just how wonderful uh, the, the listeners of this particular program are and how happy it makes us to make it. So uh, thank you all very much, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart. Like I said, next episode is going to be up uh, uh, October 8th featuring the Flop House. It's going to be so, so, so great. Please be excited for that. Uh, and you can hear us on the Flop House, uh, where we'll be talking about a, a heretofore unannounced movie that was the worst fucking 90 minutes of my life. See you soon. Okay, so you've you've heard eight horns. You uh, you you math it out and. Um, Know that you have seven opponents left. Uh, you you haven't seen the Raven's car in a while, her her longboat wagon, uh, and you are still uh, in this dust storm that's sort of whipping up around you. Um, and as you are all sort of waiting at the ready, waiting for uh, uh, the next vehicle to show itself, um, oh, an odd sort of silence falls around you, and then that silence is broken by a loud thud. And uh, Merle, you look to your right, and you realize that this large claw, almost like a uh, like one of those uh, uh, arcade machines, like a claw machine, has grabbed onto the passenger side door of the wagon. And Hurley instinctively like steers away from from where this claw has hit your car, uh, but the claw retracts and it rips the door completely off of the car. Um, but you oh. don't see you don't it, it disappears into the the dust, uh, but you don't really see anything around you and it's still like it's still just sort of oddly silent and you're, you're just sort of Shit. waiting for the next attack Is it- i had a whole cheer wine in the cup holder of that door <laughs> uh, <laughs> just he just opened it i just opened the cheer wine and now and now it's gone great i don't even want to finish a stupid race <laughs> <laughs> just pull I over it. i was gonna get a pull off of that later uh, man all right um okay Griffin, I would like to, as a free action, use my lens of straight creeping to see where the door went. Uh, that's not how it works. It leaves tracks in the ground. Ah, damn it. You could, I mean, you could perception check. Okay, can I perception check? Yeah, sure. Zero. So a 12. Uh, no, you don't, you don't really see anything. Why don't we do perception checks, Justin? What? Would you like to do a perception check? Sure, yeah. Do a perception check. Uh, 18. Okay. Plus, uh, which one's perception again? Wisdom. Someone has yeah. a perception. Uh, Nineteen. No, you you should have a perception sort of like modifier. If you no, yeah, plus one. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, pl- eighteen plus one. Merle, how'd you do? I found it. Oh, let's not worry. About <laughs> okay, that. Uh, uh, Taco, <laughs> you do kind of see something to your right, um, and and it's it's so faint that you think that maybe you imagined it, but you see like the the dust storm to your right just kind of looks weird. Like it looks like. Um, it, it, it looks like something is over there, sort of uh, getting in the way of of the dust as it's swirling around, but you you like can't see it. Um, but but you do get the idea that something's there. Uh, all of a sudden, that claw that ripped the door off shoots toward your car again, directly at the spot where it aimed last time. Only this time, it grabs onto Merle, and Merle, you are pulled out of the car into the dust. To, to the right of the car, to the right of the wagon. Merle, you, you see yourself, you see the car getting smaller as you fly away from it. Um, and then you are sort of ripped upward into the air. And then you're pulled downward into some sort of body of water. You feel yourself going underwater. Um, and you, you manage to ca- catch a short breath as you're pulled under. And then you hear a ka-chunk. And uh, it's 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 pretty dark. You can't really see anything, but you're definitely in 
a body of water. And Hurley goes, shit. Uh, <laughs> and so, okay. yeah. Well, goodbye, Merle. Anyways, <laughs> where were we? It was a great game. I leaned down in the car. Should I, like, go after him? Yeah, I mean, it's worth a shot. I'm not I'm not doing anything. I've already used two spells. I'm beat. And he's, he's still got the wrench, right? Hurley says, Hurley yells, yeah. do something. Okay, shoot cool. At, shoot at it or something. Okay, cool. I'll be right back. And I, like, hook the crowbar into the handle on the car, and I jump over to the other car. Uh, okay. Uh, you jump. You can't see the other car. Yeah. I'm just jumping over. You're just blindly jumping to the right of the car. Well, yep. that doesn't sound like magnets. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm gonna, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm going to make you do an athletics check, and I'm gonna give you disadvantage on it if you don't see where you're jumping to. That's fair. Sounds it fair. It sounds super I've fair. I've got plus I'm, seven. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. I've I'm got sorry. plus seven <laughs> to athletics. <laughs> okay. I've got plus seven to athletics, so okay. let's do this. All right, do it. That's an 18. No. And this is Roll it good and I swear Oh my god. Your rolls are too high. I need I have plus to, 7. I know, I need to bring that down. It's um, really hard to fuck up. <laughs> uh okay, yeah, you jump to the right and uh give it give, give him a shit. Never mind. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get the pull here in a second. Okay. Uh as you collide with this vehicle uh, I'm going to make you make a reflex check to actually grab onto it because I, I'll give you that you jumped into it, but grabbing onto it is going to be a horse of a different color. Uh, but as your body sort of collides with this vehicle, you feel yourself hit heavy metal. Um, and as soon as you touch it, uh, uh, Taco, you over... Give him fibromyalgia. Okay. <laughs> uh, Taco, you from the battle wagon, you can actually see this sort of camouflage drop off of... The car. And what you see almost looks like a gumball machine, almost. There's this 10-foot glass spherical tank with a heavy metal hatch on top. And it's built onto this sturdy six-wheeled base. Um, and in front of the base is uh, another thick glass chamber with these two dark elves uh, wearing octopus masks uh, driving the vehicle. Uh, and you see uh, two claws, like the one that came out and grabbed Merle, uh, sort of attached to the bottom of the tank. Uh, and inside of the tank, you see a helpless Merle floating along, uh, alongside a really big, bigger than Merle, a uh, blue-spotted octopus. Cool. Let's roll for initiative. Oh, you guys use your same shit. Yeah. The wheel guys are the last ones to go, so Taco, it is your turn first. Um, okay, can you, I'm obviously not, what can I see? You can see the whole thing now. The camouflage has sort of dropped. You see Merle floating around. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Magnus, make a, uh, make a, uh, dexterity saving throw. Uh, 11. 11. Uh, you, you don't manage to get all the way up onto the car, but you do manage to get a hand on it. Your feet are sort of dragging across the ground, which is uncomfortable. Because this car is going very, very fast. Um, but it's a, it's big enough and sort of easy enough to get a hand on that you are sort of hanging off the side of the gumball octopus. And I've still got, like, my rope and crowbar tied to the car. Yeah, too, yeah, which, sure. in retrospect... Not a great idea. Not a great idea. Uh, so, Taco, you can see everything. Um, built built into the front of the six-wheel heavy metal base is, is a, a big glass chamber with the, the octopus drivers. Inside of the tank, you see... Merle, um, about to get hugged by a big, gnarly-looking octopus. May I ask a question? Yeah. Are the two octopus mask guys, is is their chamber in water, too? No. Okay. And how many gallons do you think is in of water is in the, the bulb? I mean, it's here? like a 10-foot spherical tank, so like a, sh- a shit ton. It's like, an, it's like a swimming pool. Like a okay. thousand? I, I don't know. I, I would embarrass myself if I guessed. I know. 1,100. I okay, 1,100, sure. It's a very tense situation. <laughs> That's true. I, I've, it's almost like I've designed it to be like that. Yeah. Um, Magnus yells, magic missile, the tank! <laughs> yeah, but like, the, I mean, think about that. Like, really think for once. <laughs> 
Just like really think about it. I'm magic missing. Action the tank. over thought. Yeah, okay, that's fine. But really think about this one, Scraps. If I magic missile the tank, where does that get us? How does that help us to proceed forward with our life goals? I'm I drowning! Going badly. Uh, okay, yeah. This is, another, um, this is another good time to remind you all that uh, every round of combat lasts about six seconds. Um, so, Merle, you're not in immediate danger of, of drowning, but you definitely didn't get a full lung full of, of air. But he's got those dwarf lungs, you know, like the, the, good, the good constitution. For, good, good for drinking. If he was drowning in beer, he might be all right. What is the what is the liquid? It's salt water. Do, ah, poop. Yeah. Do I see a um? Do I see like a pilot of this? Is it just like a big squid driving a ball? No, no, no. There's two. <laughs> There's another. There are two chambers. There's two two balls. One is sort of built into the front of the car, and that uh-huh. is where these two octopus, these dark elves wearing octopus masks, are driving. It's okay. not being piloted by a blue spotted octopus. How yeah. many times does he get to use the harpoon gun? Uh, mm. I mean, it's only got the one harpoon in it. It's only got the one harpoon in it. Yeah, I'm gonna. I will. <sighs> <laughs> and they're in the water, right? Little, yeah. yeah. Little, little, little. I okay. Um, I'm gonna cast reduce on the octopus. Okay. Oh. I, I don't have a good. I mean, it, it's. It, does it look dangerous, Griffin? Does it look like someone's gonna hurt them? Um, I googled the most dangerous octopus last night, and you know what came up? <laughs> what the blue spotted octopus? Uh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna cast reduce on the um. The the it it's t- the target size is halved in all dimensions. Okay, and its weight is reduced to one eighth of normal. Wow! This increases its size by one category from medium to smaller. Example: It also has disadvantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. Its weapons shrink to match its new size, and they deal one d four less damage. Okay. If if the octopus does have weapons on it, and you didn't tell me that, and I could have been imagining oh, that this fuck, whole time, that would have been so be cool. Upset. How sweet, like a mace in his hand or some shit? Well, eight, awesome. eight maces. Yeah, eight maces, just like... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Anyway. But yeah, it's... Anyway. Do I get yeah. to re- resist it? Um. Yeah, a constitution saving throw. Uh, 11? Not gonna do it. No. Okay. No, Fred. He is, uh, he's smaller. I'm taco. He is, he is smaller now. Um, okay. Uh, Calamar him! Nice. Callum, let me that try again. Yeah, yeah one, do it yeah. again. You can do better. Um, put put the accent on the second. No, Cal- the third syllable. Calamar him. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm, nice. Mm. Um, How about this- octopus off? Oh, that's good. Octopus off. Yeah. S- cool. Uh, so uh, the next in the order is the drivers of the car, the octopus drivers. Uh, they are just going to fire another hook. Uh, toward the car, uh, and it uh, just kind of grabs onto, like it's a, a good hold uh, on the uh, the the hole that they made before, and it's sort of just grabbed onto the right side of the car, uh, and it's sort of like trying to peel it back, and you definitely feel your your wagon. Uh, sort of start to jump and shake because they are, they're trying to pull it sideways as Hurley's trying to drive it forward, um, which is not great. Next in the order is the tiny little baby blue-spotted octopus. Aww. Uh, which surveys its new real little tentacles and seems kind of dejected. Um, <laughs> uh, so it is going to propel itself forward toward you, Merle, uh, and then spin around really quickly and latch onto your face. Oh, uh, and it rolls a twenty-one versus AC, which is going to hit. Uh, but it does, how much less damage does it do? Um, uh, Taco did it. Right, I know. I think he said one d four less. Um, did Justin leave? Uh, in a way. Cool. Um, I hear a very loud watery sound in the room next to ours. Jesus, is he watering so, his plants? No, I, he might be peeing, but I don't know. 1d4 less damage from the weapons. It has disadvantage on strength checks. Okay, and strength but it doesn't weapons. have weapons. It's well, just its right tentacles up. are its weapons. No, it's it's actually biting. It's like it's attaching itself to your face, and it's biting you with its beak. 
Let's With its little tiny weapon. beak. With its little tiny beak. Okay, so he hit you, and he is going to hit you for uh, 11 points of uh, biting. With a little tiny beak? 11 points of biting damage, and then I'm going to need you to make a constitution saving throw, because his beak was covered in <sighs> delicious, delicious octo poison. Uh, we'll count his beak as a weapon, so he'll take 1d4 less damage. Do you roll that d4, or do I? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. But I'll, I'll roll it. I would think let's let the it. listeners at home roll <laughs> I it. Roll it. <laughs> uh, up your phone and dial one. I rolled a three, so he takes eight damage. Uh, and then do roll that Constitution saving throw, though. Nineteen. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Oh, and yeah. dwarves, nice. I think dwarves are really dope at resisting poison, anyway. Yeah. If this yes, is if, are. okay, well, it doesn't matter because you <laughs> avoided it. Uh, if memory serves. Uh, okay, Merle, you are up. Uh, you are you're starting to feel pretty uncomfortable. Got an octopus on your face. Uh, you are underwater. You just got bit on the nose. Uh, you, everything kind of sucks. Okay, is there any room up at the top of this globe? Is there air uh, in this globe of water? Uh, no. You you got. How pulled did he in, get in it? He, there was a hatch on top that he got pulled into, and then it sort of screwed itself back on. So the water goes all the way to the top? Uh, yes. Okay. Not that you can see uh, that right now, because you've got an octopus all up on your biz. Well, that's, that's a good point. Bite him back. <laughs> I'm going to take my war hammer and hit myself in the face. <laughs> Thereby striking the octopus and trusting that my thick dwarven head will keep me from okay. killing myself. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, are you using your Warhammer or your spanner? The the adamant spanner. Well, I don't know what the spanner will do. I know what my Warhammer does. Okay. It's up to you. I don't want to hurt the spanner. That's a good... That's fair. Okay. So, uh, first of all, you're underwater. So you're going to have disadvantage on melee attack. I understand. Um, but then you're going to do a disadvantage melee attack, just one roll, and then you're going to compare it to your AC and the octopus's AC. Okay. Hey, I, I lost track. Where's Magnus? Magnus is hanging, hanging on, on the side. Hanging on the side. The hanging on the side. <laughs> okay, great. Waiting for his turn. <laughs> Thank God he has pants on this time. Yeah. Okay, 16. Uh, and then roll it again, because you have disadvantage. 15. That includes the modifier? Plus four. So that's 19. Yeah, that's a hit. Uh, that's a hit on you and the octopus. Well. Now, he technically, Griffin, should roll a second time as if he was attacking two different targets. Or a ro get to roll a <laughs> constitution saving throw on himself. No, because he's sort of just attacking one target. I'm not going to allow that. He's definitely, right. definitely attacking a single target. Which That's is fine. his face and octopus. I knew the job was dangerous when I took it, Fred. Uh, so go ahead and roll damage, and they'll both take it. Three plus two. Five. Okay. Actually, wait, wait, wait. It's 2d8. Oh, shit. Plus okay. two. So it's six plus two, so that's eight. Okay. Uh, on me. On you and the octopus. Uh, you clobber yourself in the face. Yeah, you hit both. He's yeah, but I hit him first. Well, yeah, I should be padded. <laughs> yeah, the padded okay, yeah, yeah. The I'll octopus. tell you what. I'll, I'll cut it down. I'll roll a d4 and reduce it by two. So you only take six. You got a little bit of octo padding there. Uh, <laughs> it's not enough to kill this octopus, but it does uh, loosen itself off of your face and sort of oh, float backwards a little bit. And now I can still not breathe. You still cannot breathe because you are underwater. Next in the order is Magnus. Um, am, I, am I within reach of the, of the grabby arm? Like the part that's extended out uh yeah you're you're right next to the grabby arm that is on the the side of the the left side of the car facing your your wagon okay great i would like to uh one-handed axe attack that please as you're hanging off you said i grabbed it with one hand yeah that's true i'm just okay uh 15 22 22 yeah that'll do it okay and you just and now i would like to... the hacking at the wire that it's attached to yeah okay do I have to roll damage, or do I just do it? Uh, yeah, roll damage against it. No, nah, don't do it. Yeah, you, you, you hack the thing clean off. Uh, okay, and now I'd like to use my second attack to attack the tank. Okay. That's 13 plus 7, 20. 20, okay, yeah, you, uh, you attack the tank. This one I will make you roll damage on. 
Great, and that's one handed, so it's one d eight. I'm also going to make you make a strength check to keep holding onto the side of this car if you're not. Gonna that's fair. Yourself. I got strength of bear, baby. Okay. Bull, strength of bull. Whatever. I got strength of a big old thing. You know no, what I mean? Don't say that either. <laughs> uh, that's a five plus six, eleven damage. Okay. Uh, you don't shatter the tank, but you get rail splitter in there. Uh, and as you pull it back, a uh, spray of water just sort of blasts you in the face. Uh, and uh, the, It's refreshing. I feel great. And the, the water begins to leak out of the tank. Um, so now there is sort of a space up top uh, where, where there is no water. Uh, next, right. thing, next, I'm going to use action surge and hit it one more time. Oh, okay. Or try to. Oh, uh, ooh, that might not do it. Um, I mean, that's only a thirteen, so that's probably not gonna. Uh, no, that hits. It's, it. it's just glass. Oh, great! Just barely. Then does like a two hit? Like, what's the what's the AC on glass? <laughs> uh, I did f- another five, another eleven damage. Okay, uh, this time the the crack that you put into the glass ball uh, begins to splinter out. Uh, around uh, every sort of side of the ball. Uh, and then suddenly this ball shatters. Uh, and uh, Merle and the octopus are going to need to make dexterity saving throws to grab onto this car uh, as the deluge of water sort of splashes them off of the And side I still it. need to make a, a strength, right? Uh, yeah, I, so st- we'll, we'll resolve that first. Go ahead, Magnus, make a strength saving throw. Uh... uh. Uh, well, that well, I have advantage, right, from the bull. So that first one was the third. What? No, you don't have it. Oh yeah, yeah. Strength the bull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, okay, come. there we go. That's twenty four. Yeah, yeah. So oh, probably man. got it. I wanted you to fall off so bad. Uh, okay, yeah, you're, you're a you're, turd. That's why you're still holding onto the side of the car. Uh, now, uh, Merle, make a dexterity saving throw as the water sort come of on. washes you off the side of the car. You have let go of the rope at this point, right, Travis? You do not have a third hand that I am not. No, it's tied to me. Oh, it's tied yeah. to you. Okay. I didn't realize. He tied himself onto the battle wagon in case he fell off. Got it. Okay. I, uh, I rolled a 16. You rolled a 16? Okay, yeah. You get another hand on. You are basically land right next to uh, Magnus. Uh, hey! So the two of you are now hanging off of the side of the... Uh, the gumball octopus wagon, uh, although the tank on top is shattered. Uh, and then the octopus also slips off the side of the car. And he crits his dexterity saving throw. So right next, to, <laughs> right next to Merle, this octopus gets two tentacles on the top of the car and is now also hanging off the side of the car. This is the most adorable scene I've ever imagined. <laughs> he looks, the octopus has a very worried look in its eyes. Hey everyone, before I let you go, I just wanted to say thanks one more time to Nature Box, where you can order hundreds of great tasting snacks. You can go to naturebox.com slash adventure to sign up for a sampler box of great tasting snacks. Thanks for listening. The next episode featuring the awesome, hilarious dudes from the Flophouse is going to go up October 8th, uh, and then we'll be back two weeks after that. So see you then. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey everyone, we're the Flophouse, one of the newest additions to the Maximum Fun Podcasting Network. I'm Dan McCoy. I'm Stuart Wellington. And I'm Elliot Kalin. What is the Flophouse, you may very well ask? We watch a bad movie, and then we talk about it. A bad movie podcast? Isn't that like every fifth podcast on the internet? I'd answer that by saying, one, we've been doing this show for over seven years, long before the entire premise of our show was a cliche, and two, shut up. Sick burn. I'd say that our show is more of a comedy podcast. A podcast about words that sound like other words. A podcast about me singing long, irritating songs like this one. A podcast about pitches for a Ziggy comic book movie. Or discussions about sex tarps. Yeah, I mean, mostly it's a show about three friends just hanging out. 
and talking about ding-dongs. That's mostly used to. Wait, what? So if you like any of those things, subscribe in iTunes today or visit MaximumFun.org to follow the show. The Flophouse. Woo!